All right, guys, uh, we're going to talk about rust today. And rust is a disease that affects many different plants, uh, many trees, many fruit trees, and of course the fig. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today is how does rust affect our fig trees. And I actually have some examples this time around. I've done a couple of videos on this topic where uh, we actually didn't have any samples to show you guys in those videos because I don't normally get it. Um, it's not something that I necessarily struggle with. And there's a couple of reasons for that that we'll get into in a minute. But usually the disease, this is how the disease spreads here, guys, is that you have to have a lot of moisture on your leaves for an extended period of time, assuming the disease is already present. If the disease is not present and you have wet leaves, it's not going to matter. But if you have leaves that are wet for at least 24 hours, I think there's a certain number of hours it has to take for the disease to spread. Um, it's at least 24 hours. I think it might be more than that. Uh, but ideally, you know, you're going to have leaves here, guys, that are going to dry off, hopefully, quickly after a rain. So maybe it rains at night and you have maybe 12 hours that the leaves are wet. Hopefully in the morning, you have your trees situated in an area that gets some morning sun, um, or hopefully they're in full sun. And that full sun, that, you know, that sunlight will dry off these leaves a bit quicker than if you had them in, in a lot of shade or maybe only afternoon um, sunlight. So that's one big tip is that, you know, the disease is spread by moisture. So if you guys live in a dry place, or even if you live where I'm at, you're almost never gonna see this disease, especially if you live in a very dry place because you need the moisture to even get the disease um, and you need the moisture to continue the proliferation of the disease. So a lot of you guys, let's say in California or Arizona, the desert, West Texas, maybe even parts of the Pacific Northwest, you know, you guys are just not gonna see this disease. You're not gonna struggle with it. This is really a disease for or this video is really for people who are in the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, uh, the South, the tropics. You know, what are, this is a disease to really help those people out or a video to help those people out. Um, you know, the only way that you guys in those dry places can get this disease is if you receive a tree from somebody in a humid place that has the disease present on their tree. So let's say you got a tree, it has some brown spots on it. I'll show you some examples in a minute. But if you have these, uh, these brown spots on it, guys, and you live in a dry place, first off, don't even worry about it. Um, I know a lot of you guys contact me at any moment. You see any sort of <laughs> bad, something bad on your leaves, you guys start to freak out. These figs are very resilient here, guys. And just if you see a little bit of disease, a little bit of brown spots, it's not the end of the world. Um, especially if you live in a dry place when it, you know, in regards to this, to rust, it's just not going to be an issue because you have to have that moisture. So even if you have the disease on the leaves, you have to have an extended period of time where these leaves are wet. And that's just not going to happen in the desert, you know, in a very dry place. So, uh, you'll get it, you'll receive the tree and you'll be like, oh, this is bad. But in reality, it's going to be an issue for maybe like three days and you're going to forget about it and you're never going to see it again. Um, even for somebody like me, so how I got the disease this year, it's just really in this area here of my trees. How it was really proliferated here is actually because I received a tree from a friend. I did a trade and the tree is actually right here and you can see it's right in the middle of all the infection. So um, I don't want to blame him or I'm not going to really attack that person. And not really even, I'm not even really going to freak out about it because I know it's not an issue, but this is exactly how this whole thing started for me um, this year is that I guess his tree had the disease on it. Um, and then therefore it rained here about four weeks ago, four to five weeks ago. It rained for about, I don't know, three to four days straight. We had a lot of moisture here at one time and it really wasn't a good thing because that's exactly how the disease proliferate. So then this area here, and even going into a little bit over here, um, they got the, the disease, they got the infection. And it's especially happening towards the bottom of the canopy. Um, so the leaves that are necessarily higher up on the canopy, they're going to dry quicker, right? They have more airflow, they have more access to sunlight. 
so they're not going to be infected. But if you have a poor form, and these trees, not necessarily that they have a poor form, I mean, they do, they're not really trained the best way just yet, simply because, you know, they're young. These are my very experimental trees. I have them also really closely grouped up. I have literally two rows of trees here, you know, two rows of trees here, and then two rows of trees here. So I have literally six rows of trees <laughs> in, you know, a distance here that's probably seven feet. So if you can measure out seven feet, I have six rows of trees. <laughs> So this is really close, and there's just not a lot of airflow. Um, there's a lot of leaves in this tight little, tight little packed place here. So if your tree looks like this, let's say you have one tree, and maybe it's in this little area right here like this. Maybe it's in a seven by seven area. Um, <clears throat> if you have a lot of branches that crisscross or a lot of branches that are just not productive and just have a lot of leaves on them for really no reason, there's going to be a higher chance that you have the disease or you're, it's going to become a problem. And it becomes a problem. Here's why this disease even matters real quick. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like is that you don't want to lose your leaves. This is a disease. Rust is a foliar, a leaf only problem. The leaves will not get affected or the, the branches will not get affected by this. The figs will not get affected by this. Only the leaf. So if you lose the leaves, that's eventually what happens here, as I'll show you the different stages of this disease. But eventually you will defoliate your tree. And the less leaves you have, what does that mean, guys? It means you have less photosynthesis. You have less photosynthesis, you have less carbohydrates. Less carbohydrates means, well, you have less bricks, less sugar in your fruits. If you have less bricks, you have less sugar in your fruits, you don't have a better tasting fruit your fruit's probably not going to taste that good at all if there's, if there's no leaves. And then also, you're going to have more susceptibility to things like fermentation and mold because you don't have a high enough bricks. So it's really a, a really horrible thing that can happen to you guys if it gets out of control. That's the thing, though. Does it get out of control? Because if I leave a if I lose a couple leaves, guys, down here at the base, it's really not a big deal. I mean, I still have plenty of uh, leaf matter here especially because I don't really have many figs on these young trees, it really doesn't matter. Um, so here's what the disease looks like though, is that we have a, a smaller leaf here that sort of has the beginning stages of this, but it's not really the beginning stages because it is sort of advanced and you can see a lot of dots on here. I don't know why this camera doesn't want to cooperate, but you can see a bunch of dots there, and those little brown dots are really what it is. And the, and the more brown dots you have, the worse the disease gets. So as it is like this, this particular leaf is saying, well, I have the disease so bad, I'm not really doing a whole lot for the tree, so I'm actually going to defoliate this leaf. And you can even see it here on the back. And what's happening is because it's defoliating, this section here is already being sort of ejected and the tree is not taking care of this portion of the tree or this portion of the leaf and therefore this will probably yellow up and this whole thing will fall off so here's kind of the next stage that you'll see is that the whole thing starts to yellow the dots become more apparent uh, probably a bit darker in color and you'll start to see again a lot of this is going to start crumbling up here and not looking that great. Uh, then you have something like this where a lot of the whole thing starts to crumble up. You can see it's half brown, half yellow with still the dots present. And then the very last stage is that it just completely crumbles up into a dried brown fig leaf. So that's the issue here, guys, is that <clears throat> you lose those leaves. And before I go into like how to prevent this, I want to talk about uh, really quickly, there is a problem that can happen with figs that people um, often confuse with rust. And that's called sunburn. So if you have sunburn, it's very simple. You just have your tree in a lower light condition and you just move it into a, a larger light condition. So if I brought it from outside or inside <clears throat> in the house to outside, or if I had it under plastic and then I took the plastic off, 
or if I moved my tree into like three or four more hours of sunlight, there's a high chance I'm gonna get some sunburn. Um, and that sunburn is gonna show up on, not only on the leaf, but it's also gonna show up on the stem of the leaf. It could also show up on the branches and it could also show up on the figs. So if you guys have, you're confused about which one is it? Is it rust? Is it sunburn? Well, sunburn and rust obviously look very, very different, but that's how you know is that the rust only affects the leaves, whereas sunburn affects other parts of the tree as well. And um, <clears throat> not only that, but you'll see the sunburn like one to three days after you bring it outside or after you put it into a new environment. So um, rust is just one of those things that takes a while for it to progress. And usually it's a bit later in the season, usually after a lot of rain, many multiple days of rain, um, or just tons of humidity that you guys might have in the South. So for those of you guys who are in the South, this is the video, this portion of the video is really for you guys now. Um, how do I prevent this particular disease? Well, we talked about the moisture. Extended periods of moisture is not good. So that's really difficult. We can't really prevent that in the South. You know, you can't stop it from raining. But we, what we can do is really, um, we need to probably prevent this before it even happens. And how do you prevent a disease, really any disease? You wanna focus on the form. And this is really the biggest tip of the whole video is if you guys have the right form, you're gonna have more success with this. Um, so as an example, we don't wanna have a lot of branches growing straight up, maybe that are crisscrossing. We wanna have them more on an angle that has an open center to it. Uh, we don't probably wanna have a central leader to our tree. We wanna to top that, let it branch out, have longer scaffolds, and these scaffolds are going to then widen the canopy of the tree. Um, and also we probably wanna remove a lot of the lower growth, that lower growth probably isn't going to be that productive. It's only going to be putting out leaves that are then going to be infected with the disease. Um, so that's a good way to prevent it is to have the right form. And also when you have the right form, you also just have a more productive tree. So it's kind of like if you just really put a lot of care and attention into the form of opening the canopy, allowing good light penetration into the center, you're going to have much more success. Um, now that's not necessarily you want to have too much light penetration because you can actually burn some of the branches maybe some of you guys out there in um, you know really high light conditions but it really starts at the beginning of the season here guys is the prevention is really in the form um, now also you probably want to have the tree another way of prevent prevention is actually having the tree in the right location with good airflow uh, that's in morning sun or full sun. Um, that's really just getting these leaves drier quicker. So if you think about really how to prevent this, it's really all based around how do I keep my leaves the driest for as long as possible? What is gonna give me that condition, right? Now, once we have the disease, there's really only a few things you can do. You can't really get rid of it at this point. Once you have it, you have it. Um, you have to wait until the following season before you can pretty much start over. So everything goes dormant, it drops its leaves. What I'd recommend is pick up all the leaves. So even during the season, you have fallen leaves, you have some leaves on your tree. Let's say it just rained and you've noticed, oh my God, there's a huge infection of rust now on my tree. What you could do is pick off the, uh, the leaves with the, um, with the infection. However, the more leaves you take off, you know, the less photosynthesis you have. So for me, I don't necessarily recommend that taking the leaves off the tree. If they're gonna fall off, they're gonna fall off on their own. And in that situation, um, I would pick them all up, pick up every single leaf and dispose of them. Don't leave them underneath your tree because these leaves are the thing that have the disease on it. So if you keep these around, you're only gonna make the thing worse. It's only gonna become a, a bigger issue. Um, so that's a really big one is picking up the leaves. I have a couple products here that you could definitely use. This is um, Dynagrow Protect, which I highly recommend. I've recommended this 
I use it all the time. Um, and really the only reason this area here got infected is because I stopped using this. Um, it's kind of crazy how um, you have to really apply this stuff pretty often, which is a silica or silicon sub, um, supplement. You know, um, it really helps with things like the natural immune system of your tree, like disease resistance and pest resistance. This makes a big difference here, guys. And you can apply this as a foliar spray. You can apply this at the soil level. Uh, a lot of people ask me, Ross, would you use this for rust? And would you use it as a foliar spray? Yes, I would use it as a foliar spray. Absolutely. Um, however, a foliar spray is gonna make the leaves wet, right? So I would choose a dry day, a dry period, and I would apply this. And I would apply it once every two weeks. Once you stop applying it, uh, this is no longer present. You have to continually apply this every two weeks because um, silica is something that has to be constantly available for the tree to really um, uptake it or have it in its, uh, in its immune system to boost that immune system, right? So if you don't have that <clears throat> present all the time, it's just not gonna work. But that's probably my best bet. That is your best bet. That's the biggest thing I would recommend is actually that product. Uh, this one here is called Sulfur. And this is just a organic uh, fungicide. Uh, there's also copper. And you can use these preventatively. Um, I would recommend using, um, obviously, the Dynagro Protects or the fungicides preventatively. But if you get the disease, um, I don't necessarily, it's a judgment call. I'm not really sure if I would really recommend using any of these products as a foliar spray simply because, again, you're just gonna make the, the leaves continually wet for an extended period of time. Um, it's up to you. I don't necessarily know how to play around with that because I've never had the disease for an extended period of time, but certainly when you have any disease, spraying a fungicide is going to help. So um, is it gonna be worth it? I don't know, but if you have the disease, you have rust, you spray a fungicide, that fungicide is gonna keep the disease at bay. Um, it's probably not gonna have 100% effectiveness, um, but it will at least keep the disease at bay for you know, some period of time. Um, so that's kind of what I recommend. You gotta prevent this stuff from the beginning. You don't wanna let this stuff get out of control, especially if you're in the South, because this is really where it really is the biggest issue is places with you know 40 or more inches of rain annually, probably even more than that. Um, you wanna have maybe even the 50 range and you probably can really, even though, even if you live in a place like that, I really highly recommend changing the form. That's really my biggest recommendation for all of this. So just to recap here, guys, we talked about identifying the disease lookalikes of the disease in the form of sunburn. We talked about um, preventative measures. We talked about how you get the disease. Um, then we talked about what to do if you have the disease. So again, pick up those fallen leaves here, guys. Don't let any of these still remain here on the ground. And then next season, you will uh, not have any issues going forward, assuming you can do a good job with your preventative measures. So uh, thank you guys. Yeah, so much for, for watching this one. If you enjoyed this, you got something out of it, let me know. Hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.